Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale. As you can see behind me, still a bit of tidying up to do, but my Tesla Powerwall 2 is installed. I've had it installed now for just over a full month, so I can now give some insight into, in my new house, how much energy saving I'm getting from having just a battery storage. No solar here right now, but I've made these videos before that I think it makes sense to have battery storage to reduce your energy um, costs and I think it's going to continue to grow with the rising uh, cost of electricity so in this video I'm going to talk to you about how it's performing on one full month um, of having the battery storage and again do I think it makes sense to have battery storage in your house even without solar and what might the payback be or is it going to be 20 years and a complete waste of time let's uh, hop inside where it's a bit warmer and quieter and take you through my numbers Okay, back inside in the warm. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the performance and the cost saving that I'm seeing now. I'm fully using my Tesla Powerwall 2 again and kind of reaffirm why I think if you haven't got uh, battery storage and you're looking for ways to potentially save uh, some more money on your energy bills over time, that this video might be of help. So a couple of things to start off with, just to caveat things. Obviously, this is just based on my own personal experience and the cost savings I'm experiencing based on my usage. So obviously, it's very important that you do your own calculations to see if a battery is going to make sense to you based on the energy that you use. And obviously, the setup that I have in terms of currently now, I have no solar. I do have an eddy for heating hot water that I have set up for off-peak um, energy usage as well as my Zappi, which I charge out EVs with uh, off-peak as well. So, and then obviously just the Powerwall too. So let me go through kind of how much things were costing me before, how much things are costing me now that I'm able to use uh, saved energy in the battery from the cheaper prices, and then a rough idea of what it might cost you uh, or what the payback might be if you decide to buy a battery today. So I'm gonna base this off a couple of things. One. Uh, I've already paid back this battery from my old setup where I was using the, the Powerwall 2 and the uh, the solar I had. So any saving for me is just 100% saving um, from now on moving forwards. But I've also tried to kind of do a rough idea if um, um, the battery hadn't paid back and I was buying it today at the previous cost because you can't buy my version of the Powerwall 2 anymore. But then give you an, an indication of perhaps what it would be like with a Give Energy battery that is of a similar spec, which is what I would choose if I'd be buying uh, one today and I actually might, um, well, I say I might, I'm definitely gonna add another battery storage to my Tesla setup that won't be a Powerwall 2. So it'd be interesting to see how that works out in the future. So anyway, let's wishing on. Let me talk to you um, about um, the current situation for me. So quite high energy usage, again, because we're heating hot water with electric. And so I think that still makes, that, makes sense for me personally charging two electric cars and both me and my wife work at home full time. So we've got computers running, got servers running 24 by seven. So in general, we are a high energy household. I've worked out my average um, annual uh, electricity usage, which is 11,262.4 kilowatt hours on average based on the last three months usage at my new house. Um, so that's kind of what the calculations are based around. So let me just explain to you kind of how things worked in December when we first moved in here. So I moved in December straight away onto the Octopus Go tariff that we moved over from our old house because we do have electric vehicles so we are eligible for the Octopus Go tariff and in our first month, the first full month, we used 781.9 kilowatt hours of electricity but again we're on the Go tariff so in the evening um, some um, energy usage is happening um, off peak. So obviously all the house is running off peak. We would try and run the washing machine off peak as well. Couldn't run the dishwasher because that hasn't got a timer. Um, but we would plug in the cars to charge even if it's on a slow charge. And even though our peak rate of electricity is 29.93 pence per kilowatt hour and our off peak is 7.14 pence per kilowatt hour, we were managing then um, to get an average um, unit cost of 
0.50 pence per kilowatt hour based on you know we're still able to offset some of it into an off-peak cost now obviously if you don't have uh, currently an off-peak uh, tariff you would have been paying the full price at um, you know, 29.93 pence per kilowatt hour then in january and um, the only thing that had changed in january obviously is weather's slightly changed from december um, but haven't got the battery yet um but again we have you know we're still trying to do some car charging um off peak and again still using the washing machine and um we weren't heating the hot water at this point we hadn't had the eddy installed so it's slightly higher uh, consumption for the month 820 kilowatt hours and slightly higher uh, average cost in the end so 20.76 pence um, per kilowatt hour so you can already see regardless of having a battery storage if you can have an off-peak tariff we only have the four hours with octopus um go but it can make sense to be able to have an off-peak if you can you know if you are charging cars or even just using some of your household energy but february was the first full month that we had um the powerwall 2 installed uh, and so then able to charge up for the four hours off peak at only 7.14 pence um, per kilowatt hour and use that during the day when it would have normally cost 29.93 pence and in february we used uh, 1213.7 kilowatt hours of energy but our average unit price dropped down to 10.55 pence per kilowatt hour so we pretty much halved uh, our costs from what we had before with the battery so again just to summarize the costs the peak unit price uh, per kilowatt hour is 29.93 pence per kilowatt hour when we were using off peak but had no battery storage we were managing to have a unit rate averaging of 20.76 pence per kilowatt hour but with the battery we've dropped that down to 10.55 pence per kilowatt hour so again compared to the peak cost it's a third of that cost and then obviously from not having the battery we've halved again um, our average unit uh, price costs um, so what does that really mean as I mentioned already uh, this battery owes me nothing so it's all all profit for me all savings um, but again if you are currently on an energy tariff and had the same energy usage that I have and you have no off-peak usage each year your electricity costs would be 3,370.83 pence um, for the whole year for your electricity usage if somehow you could find a tariff that was off peak for four hours regardless of having electric vehicle um or not but anyway just the fact that you could have off peak um electricity would save you 1032.76 pence um per year um so makes it basically your, your energy cost will be 2000 338.07 pence but if you add a battery into that you'll save a further 1149.89 pence uh, per year so your energy cost would be 1188.18 pence per year in, in terms of your electricity costs so to me that's that's pretty impressive so overall changing from peak to the off peak and having the battery you'd save 2,182.65 pence per year. So had I now bought my Powerwall 2 today at the prices of when I bought it um, four years ago, and I did get a good deal on it, um, it would take me, if I hadn't, if I wasn't already on an off-peak tariff, it would take me only three years to pay this back. If I was already uh, like I am with an EV and I bought the battery after so I was already on off-peak tariff the payback would be a bit longer about um, five and three quarter years so again most batteries have a 10-year unlimited um, usage warranty so 10 years let's call it worst case six years of pay for payback in my situation you've still got four years of ongoing savings and again let's face it batteries in cars take um, a lot of usage and do many thousands of hundreds of thousands of miles without issue home battery storage in my opinion the batteries are going to last way longer than 10 years um, so shouldn't be a problem 
Now, I'll just finish up by saying, obviously, I wouldn't recommend a Tesla Powerwall 2 um, anymore. Not, I think it's not good, I just think price per kilowatt hour, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm still gonna do a, a follow-up video in the future when I look at battery storage again. Did one many years ago. I was thinking about buying a battery, but I need to do an updated version for future battery shopping. But what I have done, I have priced up, a bit like I did um, in a previous video about why I think battery storage makes sense, of a total of 14.7 kilowatt hours battery storage in the Give Energy products. Do a little screenshot to show you what the bill for that would look like. And based on the work I've been having on my house and I have my power installed and my Zappi installed and the Eddy installed and consuming units changed, it seems here in the West Midlands, a good electrician charges around 280 pounds a day. And that's how much um, it would cost to have um, a battery installed based on my experience, and obviously having the Tesla Powerwall 2 reinstalled. So if you were to buy a 14.7 kilowatt hour give energy storage batteries, that's two batteries, the total cost for that would be 7,000. 305 pounds and 60 pence. If you bought that direct um, from a wholesaler, you don't have a special account, you can just buy one of those. Obviously you should get it sort of done for your electrician. Your electrician will charge you 280 pounds uh, for the day to hang it, install it and commission it. So that's cost you 7,585 pounds and 60 pence. Now based on the usage that I have and my energy usage and the savings, again, if you weren't on an off peak tariff at all and getting this battery would means you could get onto an off-peak and get similar cost to what I've been mentioning um, and only charging it for four hours because I'm comparing this to go I only like to use comparisons that I have direct experience of it takes six and a half years uh, no sorry um, three and a half years to pay back if you already got an EV so you're already on a good off-peak tariff and you decide to add a battery six and a half years um, to pay that back so I still think battery storage makes sense. And again, I am missing my solar, but getting the Tesla Powerwall 2 back in again has significantly reduced our electricity costs. And I still think it's worth considering buying a battery if you haven't got one already. I know some people are gonna be frustrated by this video saying, show me where you can buy this and get this installed for that cost. You need to do your own homework. You need to check your own numbers on your payback and your usage, obviously the higher usage and depending on what, um, tariff you're on it's going to skew these numbers um but these are factual numbers i know stock allowing i could buy that battery that i just mentioned to you tomorrow for just under seven and a half grand and have it installed um by my electrician all commissioned fine without a problem um and that would be what my payback is and that's what i'm considering doing maybe not 14.7 kilowatts i'm thinking about maybe another nine nine and a half kilowatts battery storage that i'm going to add into my um, battery setup in the future. So I'm thinking it's probably gonna take me about five years uh, of payback because they're gonna be slightly smaller. And I'm, and I'm seeing that I could probably benefit from around another, no more than 10 kilowatts of storage. And I think I'd be perfect even in the winter to have to go all from off peak energy usage. And my tariff is changing again. So again, it's gonna be even more important to try and save money where I can on my energy bills. If this video has been helpful, please like it. It'd be much appreciated. Ask any comments you have down below and consider subscribing if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching this video. Take care of yourself and until the next one, bye for now.